Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our study of the book of Psalms. Today we're in Psalm 36, and this is a rather short psalm by David, and he describes it as an oracle within his own mind. These are, these are the thoughts of his heart, and it really falls into two categories. The one is the transgressions of the wicked in the first few verses. And then in the latter section of it, it is the mercy of God in the latter half of the psalm. And so let's look at a couple of things in relation to it and see what it is that is stated in this chapter. But first, let's read the chapter so that we're sure what's found in it. Beginning in Psalm 36 and verse 1, we read these words. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes. When he finds out his iniquity and when he hates, the words of his mouth are wickedness and decease, er, and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There are workers of there the workers of iniquity have fallen. They have been cast down, and are not able to rise. There are several things in this psalm that David is going to point out. And they seem in some ways a little bit disjointed, but they actually connect together when you take the time to stop and to examine them. The first thing that David is going to point out is going to be the wicked and the transgressions of the wicked. Now, there's going to be many passages within the book of Psalms that are going to talk about what the wicked do, who the wicked are. And this is going to be one of them. And he talks about the fact there is no fear of God before his eyes. In other words, he doesn't care what God says. He's going to do things his way. He flatters himself in his own eyes. And when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. So there's he doesn't like to be told that he's wrong. He flatters himself that he is the authority and that he knows what is best. And when he does find out that he is wrong, instead of changing his ways, he instead turns to hatred and anger as the means of response. That these are the things that are going to be his go-tos in it. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He ceased to be wise and to do good. Notice with this particular statement that there has either been the opportunity for them to do right and to do good, or they once did do right and do good, but now they no longer do. Instead, he devises wickedness on his bed, sets himself in a way that is not good, and he does not abhor evil. When David describes the lifestyle and the attributes of wickedness, they are ones that do not care about God, they are ones that are full of hatred and animosity. They are ones who are conniving and deceitful. And they are ones who refuse to abhor evil. They cannot say that those things which are evil are wrong. They are ones who have to leave all their options open. And what is good is whatever they feel like is right. Unfortunately, in our world today, there are many people that fit that particular 
purview, and that is the way they approach their life, their decision-making, and their interaction with others. And so the first portion of the psalm is about David illustrating the mindset and the reactions of those who refuse to be obedient to God. But then you're going to have this shift because he shifts to a discussion of the mercy of God and the care of God and the righteousness of God. As a matter of fact, when you drop down to verses 7 and 8, he talks about how precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. The shadow of God's wings is, is considered to be a symbol of, of protection and of comfort and of strength. That there is a place where man goes in order to seek refuge from the wickedness around him. And that is the shadow of God's wings. He says, they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house and you give them drink from the river of your pleasure. God takes care of those who will come to him. The wicked are never going to come to God. From the standpoint of as long as their mindset is set where it is, remember, they are ones that do not fear God. They are ones who are set on wickedness and they do not abhor evil. Those people cannot come to God from the standpoint of their mindset. It's not that God won't accept them. It's not that his mercy will never be able to extend to them, but rather it is the case that they will not seek it out. But there are those that will. And for those that will, God's mercy is extended. For those that will, there is a place under the shadow of his wing. He's then going to close out the psalm by talking about himself. He says, let not the foot of pride come against me. Verse 11, let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. Then it becomes personal. So David here is talking about the contrast of the lifestyle of the wicked and the lifestyle of the one who is seeking God. For the one who is willing to seek God, there is always a place of safety. There is always a place of protection. For the one who is seeking his own way and the one who cares only about himself, there's a place for them as well. And that place is by themselves. They are in their own corner by choice, not by force. These are some of the things that I see in Psalm 36. I hope that these things have been beneficial to you. Thank you for joining us today. Next time we'll come back and we will begin looking at Psalm 37. I hope that you'll join us then. But until then, have a great day.